Hello, Internet, and welcome to another episode of my Experimental Cataclysm series. If you're new to the channel, this is a show where I talk about the changes that have come to the experimental version of Cataclysm over the last couple of weeks. Now, we don't have a ton of stuff to talk about this week, although you did get a bonus video for this series a few days ago. If you haven't seen my video regarding changes to the auto drive system, I'll pop a link up here in the corner. You might be interested in watching that. But anyway, we've only got a few changes I want to talk about this week, so let's just dive into it. First up, we have some guitar changes from Aaron, or should I say Jum Jum Ja, I guess? Frankly, this change isn't going to affect the way you play the game. I just happened to be on Discord when they were discussing it, so I thought I would shout it out. Basically, this change increases the damage from several of the guitars and uh, guitar-esque weapons, but it also makes them all fragile. Now, I'm pretty pro this change. If I hit you with my electric guitar, you would for sure be hurting, although it would probably come apart in my hands after a few swings. Now, the damage and whatnot is different depending on the weapon. Obviously, a ukulele hits a little bit different from an acoustic guitar, which hits a little bit different from an electric guitar, etc., etc. But anyway, not much to say about this. Uh, it's just a fun new way for you to live out your rock star fantasies in the game and smash up some guitars. Next up from Ashudo Shdubi. We have, thank you, I love you guys' names. You, you all really have fantastic names that I never know how to pronounce. Anyway, we have a change here to the description of the Batwing Zombie. Now, I saw this PR and I wasn't going to talk about it because it's pretty simple. Basically, the Batwing Zombie previously referenced that it was a clumsy creature, but in reality, due to their leap ability, they actually could move around quite fast. So this PR adds a reference to that leap attack in their description. Now that sounds pretty simple, right? Well, upon further investigation, I actually found that the Batwing Zombie and its upgrade, which is the Gargoule, I believe, it's a bit confusing what these creatures are intended to be. Now the description and the comments for the Batwing Zombie say that it is slow and it is clumsy. Now the Gargoule also has comments referencing them as slow and clumsy. But in reality, the Gargoule can leap with a cooldown of two and can move eight tiles at a time. This may very literally be the fastest creature in the game due to this ability. I think that the idea behind them was to make mutant zombies that are kind of growing wings and as a result they're very clumsy. And I think that idea is actually fantastic and I love it, but I think the execution has made two very fast and very capable creatures which doesn't seem to be the initial intent. The descriptions and the comments make them sound, at least to me, like they're silly and dopey and they're actually not that when you see them in the game. The Gargoule, for instance, outside of a vehicle, I'm pretty sure is literally impossible for a character to outrun. I, I, I sat and I thought about this, could we teleport, could we move? I don't think there's any way for you to outrun a Gargoule, they just move too quickly. And frankly, that's totally fine if that is what was intended. But personally, I think based on all the other information, both of these creatures, they should get their descriptions and possibly their abilities reworked. Now, I really love the idea of an awkward winged zombie, some fledgling trying to figure out its brand new mutant anatomy, right? That sounds very, very interesting. I can't stress that enough. I think that's actually a great idea. And I don't think that every zombie needs to be combat viable. I think it would be perfectly fine to make the Batwing zombie the kind of awkward teenage years of this creature have them flopping around like they can't figure out their wings. If it's possible, I think making them fall prone every time they leap would be absolutely hilarious and I think it really fits that narrative. But the upgrade, the Gargoule, I think that's really genuinely not balanced and someone should really take a look at it. I think they're actually incredibly dangerous and fast and I don't know if that's what was intended here. And listen, if the creator is watching this, this probably seems like I'm calling you out. I'm really not trying to do that. I think it's a great idea. I just think it, I don't know if it's working the way you intended it to work. Or maybe I'm completely wrong and I'm being a huge douche right now. I don't know. Uh, don't hate me. I love you. I just think that someone should look at them and I think a cooldown of two might literally be the fastest cooldown of any creature in the game. It's just too much, I think. But okay, now I feel weird. So let's just move on to the next change uh, in case I'm embarrassing myself. From Lyle SY, we got the addition of aquariums to the game. Uh, only tangentially related, but hey, fun fact, every time I see the word aquarium, my brain says that it's supposed to be spelled A-C-Q, and I have no idea why I think that, and my brain is definitely wrong. But anyway, this change adds new aquariums to the game, specifically the kind that you might keep in your home, although it is quite large. It's not a little uh, fish tank for a, a goldfish, for instance. It's a, a much larger tank. This is not an aquarium location. That's what I thought when I saw this initially. This just makes the tanks available in pet supply stores and places like that. Now there was talk in the PR of adding lobster tanks to grocery stores, but it looks like they weren't actually able to make that happen. 
Also, and this is a huge pet peeve, and yes, I'm still angry about it, but 94% or so of all grocery stores are looted when you find them, so I'm not really sure what the point of adding tanks to them would be when you just essentially cannot find an unlooted grocery store. Uh, but anyway, so I had a look at the tanks in the game and I tried to test them out and see what I could do with them. Now, unfortunately, this thing weighs 180 pounds and has a large volume and that weight is before the water was added. So I'm not really sure how I'm supposed to put fish in it. I, I, initially, I thought I'd have to take the aquarium to a pond or something and sort of, you know, corner a fish and get it inside. But with water inside, the, the tank weighs about 600 pounds. So although I like the idea of tanks existing as furniture items and the ability to hold fish as pets, I think that's really neat. I, I, I think that the current implementation, I don't see how that's viable at all. Uh, there should have been smaller tanks implemented for you to go out and gather the fish and then the big aquariums for you to keep at your base. Or maybe that's coming. I don't know what they're planning to implement. I just don't see how anyone is going to haul this 200 plus liter monstrosity down to the river and try to corner a fish. Maybe I'm misunderstanding something, but it really just seems a bit bonkers to me at the moment. So hey, we have aquariums now. Uh, I just don't really know what the future looks like for them, and I'm not, I don't really see them being a viable thing for you to be using at the moment in the game. Next up from Korg, we have the beginnings of something pretty interesting. Now the PR we're going to look at, there's not much I can say about it. It's really just the foundation of something new, so I don't know what we're going to put on screen here as we talk. But anyway, this change adds some of the basic infrastructure for allowing players to gain and lose body parts through mutations and or traits. Now, I've seen Korg mention some of this stuff on Discord and people seem really, really interested to see how it all shakes out. Like I said, there's not much to talk about yet. You cannot mutate full on new body parts at the moment. There's still a lot of kinks to work out before that actually happens. Korg lists some things at the bottom of this PR, for instance, like uh, difficulty with clothing. There's also a ton of stuff that this would impact. More limbs means more attacks, for instance, more things to wield all at once. How do you handle that in the current game? We'd need to be able to go through and modify clothing and track the changes to coverage and additional material requirements. Now, what happens when you lose both of your legs? You wouldn't be able to walk or run. Would you be able to crouch? Would you just be able to go prone and crawl around? Um, and, and because of all those factors, and sure, surely there are many, many more that I'm not thinking of, there's a lot of work that needs to be done before we start seeing this in the game. Mostly though, I just wanted to point this out because it's a really neat thing and lots of people seem very excited to see how it all goes. So shout out to Korg. I think you've got a ton of work ahead of you, but people really seem to love the idea, so that is something. Next up, we have Hobbies and Character Creation, added by Account Alias. Now this adds a new tab to the Character Creation menu, the Hobbies tab, obviously, and this allows you to choose certain hobbies for your character. Now on the surface, I think this is great. Previously, for instance, if you wanted to play as a drug addict, you actually had to choose a profession that started with an addiction. Now you can simply add your drug addictions from the hobby menu. So you can actually, I don't know, finally you can role play that heroin addicted priest that you've always wanted to. And hobbies will allow you to gain skill experience and some proficiency. So conceptually, I think this is really great. And I think really anything that allows you to have more control of your character is a good thing. So then why do I have complaints? Why isn't this a complete win? Well, see, when you select a hobby, you'll see what you get on the right-hand side of this menu. However, the skill that you gain is represented in experience rather than levels. And the reality is that experience is completely hidden from the player during the game. All we see in our skills menu is a percent representing how close we are to the next level. We never actually see the experience. If I select, say, Gearhead as a hobby, you'll see that I start with 90,000 experience in vehicles. Now be honest with me, internet, does even one person who is listening to this right now, do you have any idea what that comes out to be in skill levels? Uh, Debs, you don't count. I'm talking to players right now. Players, do you have any idea how many levels you would gain from 90,000 experience? Is it nine? Is it 50% of the way to level five? There's no way for you to know. Uh, it's three, by the way, not that anyone would know that. Now you can see the final result on the final screen of character creation, but it does not show in the skills tab. And if you have a profession modifying a skill plus a hobby, hobby plus the skills menu, there's no easy way to display how many levels you're getting from each source, which I think would be really nice for character creation. Because I do think this is going to confuse both new players who have no idea what experience means. I think it's going to be a problem for old players because who we never see experience. So why would we know what this means? So now, although I think the idea here is great, I think the execution is actually really quite poor. Although using experience values makes sense in a lot of ways, like having the ability to give the player a percent skill rather than than a full skill level, I just think it's a bad display. 
My expectation is that we will see a lot of players coming into Discord or wherever and asking what the experience means, how they equate it to levels, etc, etc. I also think that for new players this is going to be very confusing when experience as a value does not exist anywhere in the game that I'm aware of. Yeah, uh, I guess I have a lot of negative opinions today, I don't know, I just saw this and despite having played Cataclysm for more than, frankly, most of you who are watching this, I still had no f***ing idea what 90,000 experience equated to. And then finally today, let's talk about the addition of a prone movement mode from J... Ooh, I'm gonna say Chaplinsky. Uh, apologies if I said your name wrong. This change adds a new movement mode called Prone, naturally. You can select this mode as you would any other mode from the game, the pop-up menu, the cycle movement mode key, or by binding an individual key for being prone. People have talked about adding Prone in some capacity basically since even before crouching was implemented, so I know that some people will be excited to see this. Now, moving while prone is shockingly very, very slow. The feature is not fully implemented at this moment, and in my opinion, you have literally no reason in the game to ever go prone, so I don't know how much this does for you at the moment. Cover, for instance, like uh, when you normally you're able to crouch behind an obstacle and that will hide you from view of enemies, that has not been implemented while being prone. So being prone does not actually hide you from enemies, even when there's a pretty large item between you and them. So don't try that, you'll be moving very slow, you'll have no cover, and they will immediately swarm you. I did this accidentally a few times in my gameplay. Uh, Kevin has also talked about making crouch and prone insulate you from some bomb fragments when something explodes near you. That is a possibility in the future, so that is something to look forward to, although it has not been implemented yet. The same is true for aiming, being faster or more accurate while crouching or prone, probably eventually, but not at the moment. And I really can't think of any other reason why I would ever go prone, so I just recommend avoiding it, frankly, especially for the time being where it has, like, as far as I know, literally no value in the game. Uh, and if if I missed something obvious, please leave me a comment down below on why being prone is valuable. I looked, I didn't see a reason to do it. And again, I'm not saying it's a bad change, it's just that most of these things are not implemented yet. This is the initial implementation of the prone feature, so at the moment there's no reason to be prone. I'm sure in the future there will be more value here. And for me personally, I already, I don't use crouch in the game, I don't see a reason for it. 99% of the time when someone in the comments or on Discord they mention using crouch all the time, it's usually because they're using an exploit to kill turrets. I almost never hear people referencing it as it's supposed to be used. No one uses it to just sneak around a little bit. Seems like every time someone brings it up they're using it for exploits. So I'm not saying it's bad, I, I think cover and sneaking could be valuable, I just don't use it, and most of the time I, I talk to players, they don't use it for that reason. So to me, prone just in general is not very appealing. Maybe once it affects aiming, I'd consider it, but currently I just don't see much point to it. I, I'm, and again, not saying it's a bad change, I don't see any reason it shouldn't be implemented, I just don't think I'll be using it much. There has been some cool stuff that was added with this change. For instance, being prone in acid will cause damage to your body rather than just to your legs if you were standing. I thought that was a pretty cool side thing that this does. Additionally, having both of your legs broken and not having crutches will also result in you falling prone. Uh, oh, they also made several objects count as crutches, like canes and some weapons. It's pretty niche, uh, to be honest. I can't remember the last time I broke a limb, let alone two of them at once, so I suspect that won't come up very often. There are also several issues that came along with the change, however. Uh, specifically, one was pointed out to me by Vormithrax. In the game now, when you sleep, your character does switch to being prone. Now, it makes sense. You know, most of us lie down when we sleep. However, this can put you at a real disadvantage when you wake up. There was some talk about this in general, and it seemed like this is not ideal. It's possible that in the future you will automatically leap up to your feet if you wake up to combat. I guess to prevent too much punishment for the player. I don't really have thoughts on this. I feel like lying down to sleep makes sense, and being vulnerable when you wake up also makes sense, so I don't really see a huge issue with it personally. Another issue is using the cycle movement mode key and additionally the little uh, overlay that shows up showing what movement mode you're using. Um, it'll depend on your tile set. Now currently if you download the game today, the double quote key that we're all probably familiar with using for the last few years, it uses the menu pop-up now. It no longer cycles the movement mode by default. But I am old and I have old keybinds, so I always just toggled through the movement modes until I found the one I wanted. Now unfortunately at the time of this recording, many times 
file sets do not have an indicator for when you're prone, so it just looks like your character is in walking mode. Now this has led to me, and apparently many other people, trying to move while prone when they thought they were actually walking. Now this is already being addressed, I believe Undead People has already added this new marker and I saw that the Altica folks were working on it, it's just a question of when that will be merged. So you just need to be extra aware of your movement mode as moving while prone will all, I mean, it'll get you absolutely demolished by enemies nearby. A more minor complaint for this is that toggling movement modes actually progresses from walk to run to prone to crouch. And I don't really, I don't really understand this. I feel like it should be after crouch, but you know, whatever. It's minor, but it's been throwing me off quite a bit. Uh, so there it is, internet. Uh, we got prone, sort of. Uh, it's been implemented, but most of the value for this movement mode has yet to be added to the game. I really don't know when that will be coming or if I will use it personally. I don't really see any point to it for the time being unless you want to role play laying on the ground I guess. The additions of being prone with two broken legs or getting full body burns from acid, those things are pretty interesting, although both of those are also very niche and it's not something that happens every day. And with that, I guess we'll wrap the episode. Uh, remember to smash that like button on the way out, subscribe if you like the content, and I'll be back in a couple weeks with another episode. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time.